what's up everyone in this video i'll be showing you guys how to make a star wars vfx now this is a little bit more advanced than what my normal tutorials would be so stay with me if you have any questions feel free to join my discord or leave a comment i'll be trying to answer comments as much as possible but to start off what we need to do is actually grab a bunch of morphs and assets to help us make this so to do that what you want to do is you want to go home make sure your toolbox is selected and then go to models now type in clone trooper now these phase 2 clone trooper packages should show up and all you need to do is just click on them and all of these morphs will load in sorry a little frog in my throat all these morphs will load in and this comes with a bunch this comes with unknown like clone trooper legions arc trooper 212 501st and a bunch of others they even have bad batch if you're looking to do something with those now once you have those loaded in select your favorite of course my favorite legion is the 212. Now what you want to do is you want to just drag them over to over here. All you gotta do is just drag them over like this in Roblox Studio. I already have all mine set up. Now what you want to do is select one of them. Now all of these actually have shirt and pants with them. And what you want to do is you just want to select both of them. And then you want to equip them to your already pro rig. Now once you've done that, you just want to slide the armor over the character. And this will make sure that when you export this to Blender that the armor would actually be on top of the character and it's not going to be all messed up. That's very important. Now once you have everything slid over, you just want to right click, save the export, export selection. And you want to save that to an empty folder. Now you just want to move the armor aside. Now you also want to make sure you have your already pro textures um, or your rig textures already exported. And you just want to right click. Save, export, export to selection. Now, once you're done with those, you can do that for as many as you want over here, as many as the morphs as you want to. But once you have all of them selected, what you want to do is now head into Blender. All right, just like we do in any other Roblox the GFX tutorial video, we're gonna to want to get in our rig. Now, we're gonna to want to go for the block the rig. And you want to select any body part, go into shading, main texture, hit X on this, get rid of that gray texture. I'm going to bring in that like black under armor we have. So let's just grab that real quick. There we go. Now we don't need to add a face for this one because it's going to be wearing a helmet anyway, so it doesn't even matter. So then we want to bring in our armor, go to file, import, go all the way down to your wavefront OBJ. All right. Now you want to go into the folder where you put the armor and you want to make sure you have the OBJ selected and not the MTL. And you want to also want to make sure you have split by group selected. There we go. Import. Now there's going to be a few issues. Number one, because of Roblox Studio, it's not always going to be lined up perfectly. So we just want to adjust it a slight bit. We're going to move it back. There we go. Maybe a little forward. I'm going to move it back a little too far. There we go. I think we're looking good. Now another issue we're going to see is that the head on this rig is way too big for this helmet. So you just want to select the head, hit S, and scale it down a little bit. Now how scaling works is once you hit S, if you move it further away from what you clicked, it's going to get bigger. And if you move it closer, it's going to get smaller. So let me just go back. And it looks like everything is fit in perfectly just for the armor. Now we need to attach the armor to the rig. Now this part is going to get a little bit complicated, mainly because armors like these have a lot of little parts that aren't attached. So what I mean by that is this little light up here is actually not connected to the helmet and this antenna is not connected. So we want to make sure all of them are selected. To select multiple things, you just want to hit shift and then left click, make sure we get everything. Even these straps up here aren't even connected to the helmet. So. Once we have everything selected, we want to hit shift again and right click this cog up here. Then we want to go all the way up here, go to pose mode. We don't have to shift again, we just click this one and then hit control P. And this is going to connect everything to this line right here so that when we rotate it, the helmet's going to move with it. And once we have that, we just need to collect, connect, collect, connect the armor to the torso. We want to get this little black black plate back plate and this torso plate connected again we want to do the same thing select all the parts and go into pose mode 
I'm gonna connect it to this upper torso. Now here's where the difficult part comes in and it gets really annoying. When connecting the arms and the legs, you're gonna notice a glaring issue when you start to pose. So I'm just gonna connect it like we would normally do in the upper arm. So just like that, it's connected. But one issue is when we try to bend it like this, it's not gonna move with the arm. And to fix that, we're gonna need to do a little bit more in Blender. So give me one second to redo everything I just did. So what we wanna do is we wanna select the arm piece we wanna work with. Now it's gonna be this right one. And then what you wanna do is go into edit mode. Now as you see all these vertexes gonna show up. It may look a little intimidating, do not worry. We don't have to work with all of them. So what we wanna do is now hit this X one right up here. That's gonna give us a nice angle to what we're gonna do. So you also wanna make sure you're in the wireframe shade and viewport. This is gonna make sure all the wires are shown. So then you also wanna make sure everything is selected in the arm. Now, because before we went into edit mode, we had the arm selected, only the arm parts are gonna be affected here. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab your select tool and just go like this. Now this is gonna select everything within the model that we selected. Now you wanna hit control P. Actually, never mind. We don't want to hit control P. We just want to hit P for this one. Now you want to hit section. Now what this is going to do is going to break up the model that we had. Go back into this viewport. And now you see this is top part along with the elbow. And this is the bottom part. So once that is done, what we can do now is connect it like we would normally do. So click the top part. Click the cog. Pose. And then when we connect it up here. Only the top part would be connected along with the elbow piece. And now we can select the bottom part, hit the cog again, and connect it to the hand. Now it's gonna turn out to where it's moving like this. The elbow is staying there, and the bottom piece is moving. Now the annoying part is we're gonna do that for each each of the legs and each of the each of the arms for every time we want to move into a new armor. So I'm going to connect the rest of them real quick. So just to save time, make sure this video isn't 30 minutes long. I'm going to do that and I'll, I'll be right back with you guys. All right. With the off camera work, as you see, everything is now bendable and it's not going to be all cattywampus when we try to move it. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do multiple rigs. So what we want to do is once we're done with our main, which is Commander Cody, we want to move into another starter rig. And once again, we want to repeat the same process of what we did basically and open up that rig with all the textures. There we go. Now for this one, we just want to go to import, wait for an OBJ, and then we want to go to tutorial. Again, this is why I name my folders. You can name yours, whatever. And this time we're going to do the airborne. Import it. Now, as you can see, it's not going to be lined up once again, and you can always use these axes axes to line it up oh, there's a little block so let me just switch it now once everything is lined up again we just want to repeat that same process of connecting everything together this one seems a little bit more simple next thing we want to do is as the commander cody is never just going to be alone just with one trooper he's going to have an army with him so what we want to do is we want to select everything including the models the rig and everything in between and then we want to hit shift D. Now as you see, shift D does nothing because you haven't moved the model yet. But as you can see, the model is now duplicated. I just noticed that rig is clipping a little bit. So let me just fix that real quick. I should have noticed that earlier, but um, if you ever make a mistake like that, it's clipping a little bit. Just select all the body parts and shift them a little bit. No big deal. All you have to do is to just create more clone troopers without having to do all the work of connecting the models to the rig. Just do like that and hit shift D. And once again, another two troopers will come out. So that just prevents you from doing all the work and you can just use the same trooper or you can do multiple troopers. But as you can see, we have all of our troops ready to be posed up. Now all we're missing is one little thing, is their weapons. Now, I like to go to a little website called Sketchfab. So just open up any browser. Once you're in Sketchfab, all you need to do is just type in DC 15. 
Now, as you can see, DC 15 C's, A's, and all the different variants come up. Um, you can select any one you want. Make sure that when you do type in DC 15 or any model you're looking for, make sure you hit downloadable. And there also are gonna be paid ones and there's gonna be freed ones. You know which one is paid by this little dollar sign up here. If it's free, it'll just have this download up here. Now you can select any of these that are free. Of course, you can always go for paid versions, but you know, we love free stuff here. So I'm just gonna go for this one right here. Now, you also wanna make sure it has a decent amount of downloads just for your safety of your computer. Sometimes these do include viruses, but like, don't worry, the higher, the, one, the more downloads it has, the safer it will be. But once you select it, all you wanna do is go into download 3D model right here. And then you want to go all the way down to GLB. Now there's going to be two types of texture sizes, the 4K and the 1K. 4K, this is better for if you have a better laptop, PC, or whatever device you're working on. So I'm going to get that because I think mine is able to handle the 4K. If you have a lower end PC, then definitely go for the 1K textures. And you just want to hit download. But once they're done downloading, all you want to do is go to File, Import, GLTF. Now you want to go to your downloads, DC 15. Of course, I have a couple of DC 15s already ready up. Now you just want to hit download. Now this could take a second to load in. So don't think that your blender is crashing. Also hit a save once in a while. To save, all you have to do is file and save. Just to save your work. And sometimes loading in the model does crash your blender. Now, once again, you're going to see that some things are not in proportion with our rigs. As you see, this DC-15 is way too big for our, our Commander Cody. So again, what you want to do is hit S. Bring it in closer this time to shrink. Now that's going to be more about the size that we want. Maybe shrink it a little bit more. There we go. Now we just want to pose it up with Cody over here. Now I'm going to do my posing off camera. Again, just to save you guys time from, you know, watching me work. So give me one second to get everything posed up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back. So as you might notice, there's a big difference in what I just had to what I have now. So let me update you what I did. All I did was just import a few more of these DC 15 Cs. Don't cook me if I get that name wrong. And of course, if you want to get more of these without importing the model and adjusting the size, all you need to do is shift D and that duplicates it once again. So that's how I gave everyone their own little gun. So, and you're probably wondering, the biggest thing is how did I get this background or this scene? So one thing you can do, and I totally recommend you do this, is you go into, once again, go into Sketchfab. And I, of course, I looked up an Utapal um, background, but I didn't see anything funny and good. But I did find this Destroyer Bridge, a Star Destroyer Bridge that looked amazing. So of course, I imported it into Blender. Now how I did that was pretty much the same as how we got our guns in, is I went to import GTLF, and what I did then was I imported it, I sized everything down, so where our clone troopers actually look like they can use the consoles and actually reach the buttons and everything looks in proportion, so I did that, and then I just adjusted our camera angle to where we can see everyone, and pretty much that's it. Lucky enough, this model actually does come with its own lighting. So if I were to switch this render into cycles, it's going to look so much better. Almost at a point where it might even crash my laptop. So I'm going to switch it to cycles and render it and give it a moment to see what it looks like. All right, it is finally done rendering. That took about like 10 minutes. But once we're done rendering what we have, what we want to do is now go to image and we just want to hit save. You can save that anywhere in your desktop. But just know where you is, because we're gonna just know where you is. Just know where it is, and we're gonna go into Photoshop. So I'll see you there. All right, now that we're in Photoshop, um, I did do a little bit of work beforehand, mainly just because um, I was recording, but the audio got corrupted, which is very sad. So just to sum up, what I did do <laughs> is I went into the select tool, and it's not selecting anymore. Oh, there we go. And I just selected my characters just like this. I'll make sure you hit shift so you can select more than one. And then I went in and created a new layer mask by going down here. 
into this little square button and then once the, the new layer pops up you want to hit this whole button and that nope it didn't create a layer mask oh it did it just needed time and then i added some white and blue highlights to it now all you need to do to do that is just change your color to white and you want to go up here and just your brush a little bit lower flow um i normally use between three and five sometimes 10 but nothing too crazy but then i just highlight a lot of places where the light would hit as you can see it's mainly the upper regions and a little bit like here the toe or here the side leg a little bit of this armor pocket just i worked with the natural lighting that we already had so i tried to not do anything too crazy i add a little bit more there but once you've done that all you want to do is hit layer down or merge down and that will connect your two layers so that uh, the shading does go with the layer now what you can do is you can adjust your tones naturally so that with the bleh, with the highlights you just did what you can do is you can go to image and then auto tone and that's gonna match the highlighting you just did with the background and it's gonna make everything fit in a little bit more now again you can always do it manually with uh, just in curves but since this is kind of beginner level I, I want to keep it beginner level so then after that you're pretty much done now I would add a blaster bolt or something else but I feel like this video has run on run on long enough so I'm gonna end it here um, I appreciate you guys watching if you guys do have any questions please let me know down in the comments or you can let me know in, down in the discord um, it's always in the description after every video and if you're a little confused about the beginning steps of this, um, definitely go check out my last two videos. They're very beginner friendly, so you don't have to worry about like me skipping past parts like I did in this video. It's just for the sake of time, because I didn't want to make it like 30 minute video again. Editing in that was actually miserable. <laughs> but without further ado, um, I'm going to end this video here. I might make a follow up video on this on how to make blaster bolts in Photoshop. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.